The night is an eye, both dark and bright. It forces us to look up and ask ourselves, what are we doing here? Where are we going? Under the gaze of the starry night, we find ourselves small and alone. The darkness that surrounds us gives way to the light and we observe the sky. Noek, Venus. We discover Ur, the moon. And from the Earth on the prowl is Balaam. A jaguar carrying the stars on its skin. But the beginning and end of all things are dictated by Kin, the god of the sun. Following in his footsteps, life on Earth awakens, blooms, and returns to a slumber. Thanks to the god Kin, wings unfold, colors burn, life shows itself in the face of an animal. From the ground, plants and trees emerge, and a saber grows. This sacred tree connects the underworld, the earth, and the sky. Wide and towering saber, from whose shadow we raise our eyes skywards. And from the movements of kin, the stars and planets, we can know and name time itself. We follow the journey of the sun, building steps out of days and years. Temples are oriented towards the light and path of the sun. This way, we know the exact moment when the god Kin breaks away from the horizon, when he reaches the highest point in the sky, and when he hides himself within the colors of sunset. The need to look up at the sky, the constant impulse to learn what is happening in this dome that surrounds us, and observing the apparent motion of planets, stars, and other celestial bodies brings us closer to an understanding of the cycles of the cosmos, of ourselves, and of the idea of infinity. We, the Mayans, use two different calendars, just like all Mesoamerican cultures. One calendar of 365 days is based on the movement of Kin, the sun god. It has 18 periods of 20 days that add up to 360. So five days are added to keep up with the sun. Our other calendar, the ritual almanac of 260 days, is organized into 20 periods of 13 days. Both calendars begin at the same time. But after the first 260 days, each seems to take its own course. 73 cycles of 260 days and 52 cycles of 365 days go by before the calendars align again. Everything is renewed and the cycles start over again. The new fire is lit and we celebrate that the world will live for another 52 years. The butterflies, the peppermo, carry small pieces of light and sun on their wings. They like to leave droplets of light at the feet of El Castillo. Here in the well of Itzai's Chichen Itza, we built this temple in honor of Kin, the god of the sun and time. El Castillo was built on a cenote. It has nine platforms like the nine levels of the underworld. Its upper sanctuary faces the four cardinal points. 
and on the north steps during the sunset at the equinox, when night and day are the same length, Kukul Khan, the feathered serpent, appears. Serpent of light and stone. It comes down slowly, showing its body of both reptile and bird in seven triangles of light, until its stone head begins to appear over the top of the stairs. It shows seven triangles because there are seven courses running through the universe. North, south, east, west, the center, the sky, and the underworld. Kukul Khan descends to give us our calendar and time. From the pyramid, we can observe the eternal movement of the sun. We can see it emerging from the horizon, navigating through the sky and disappearing into the sea of night. Only twice a year, the sun reaches the zenith, the highest point in the sky. At this time, when the sun is directly overhead at noon, no shadows are cast on the sides of the pyramid. It seems that even the shadows are hiding from the power of Kin, the sun god. El Castillo reveals to us the moment when the sun reaches its zenith. At dawn on the two days when this occurs, the vertices of the nine platforms indicate the position on the horizon where the sun will rise. At noon, the sun reaches its zenith. The shadows find shelter, they hide. And at sunset, the west staircase aligns with the solar disk on the horizon. The never-ending movement of the sun is that of a perpetual return to the Earth, where life's days may be numbered. But we will return to the sun, a sun that will have grown and that will be redder than blood itself. We know that several million years from now, we will return to the origin of all things, visible and invisible. Time has the same face in Uxmal. It is always recorded in the Mayan style. We can predict the movements and cycles of some celestial bodies. From our buildings, we indicate their locations shining in the sky, at specific times determined by the Mesoamerican calendar system. In the quadrangle of the birds, the great Adivino pyramid is oriented to the west, directly towards the sunset on two different dates, separated by the 73 days of the summer solstice. From here, we recognize the number 73 as a sacred figure on the calendar, enveloping the god Kin as he burns up on the horizon. In the dark, we open our eyes. We are shadows looking towards the stars. And from these rocks, we recognize the brightest planet in the sky, Noek Venus. Venus emerges at its most extreme position on the southeastern horizon as seen from the Palace of the Governor. This building is decorated with a great number of mascarons of Chuck, the god of rain, whose eyes contain the hieroglyph of Venus. Venus is of great importance. We follow its every step and write them in stone. We build stelae, like the one in Chechen Itza, to show how our astronomers were able to measure the movements of the Sun and Venus. Eight 365-day years contain five periods when it's possible to see Venus. This means that every eight years on the same date, we meet Venus in the same part of the sky. In Edzna, the structures and glyphs still speak of the importance of the calendar and the moon we pay particular tribute to the god Kin. This pyramid rises towards him and marks important recurring dates in our cities. These dates indicate the perfect division of the solar year, defined by 260 days and by multiples of 52. We build these temples as places to leave our offerings and talk to our gods about life and time and they respond to us. 
the forest spreads out all its tendrils and creates new pathways. The gods are with us behind their gazes of stone and stucco. Chuck gives us the rain. With the arrival of water, we know that tomorrow we will have food. And Balam will travel through the night as a thirstless jaguar. A hummingbird flies over the area. It seems to bring something urgent, a message that stirs without rest. It reminds us both of battles won and of those that rage on. It takes us to Bonham Pack. With every pace, on every step, we bow. Here, the Mayan blue, green, ochre, red and black colors adorn the women who make themselves beautiful. The notes played by the trumpets, drums and maracas. A party erupts within this procession of images with large solar mascarons and parasols. In the central area of the building, the colors and statues seem to exude blood. Everything evokes war. However, on the vault, four squares depict representations of animals and characters accompanied by hieroglyphs of stars. Based on the date that the Mayans painted, 6th of August, 792 AD, these depictions can be identified as the constellation of Orion, the Pleiades star cluster, the red star Aldebaran in the constellation of Taurus, and the planet Mars. In this place, we have won the war, and we celebrate with a feast. The rulers are the most powerful men, because they have ownership of all knowledge. This is why their power is recorded on the stones, and why our King Chan Wan holds in his arms the monster of the sky, the Milky Way. From Palenque, we observe a galaxy as vast as our forest. We build universes of kings like that of the great Pakal. At the base of his throne, we can see Balam in double. Two jaguars look out at us. Even the flowers represented on the facade of the house have eyes nestled amongst their petals. Everything invites us to observe. And by looking, we know that the sunlight falls directly over the path at sunset, on the two dates that divide the year into periods of 260 and 52 days. Once again, we worship the calendar and the gods that invented it. We paint Venus Noeg on the inside of the tower of the Palacio, and feathered serpents bear witness to Pakal's reign. Everything seems to head towards eternity. All eyes are directed towards the king and his descent to the underworld, surrounded by a celestial flock. We observe the universe every day and night. And after witnessing every change in the sky, we can identify the white rabbit on the surface of the moon. It always appears jumping from place to place. This is why in San Hervasio, on the island of Cosumel, we built a temple for Ishel, goddess of the moon, oracle and sanctuary. The temple still preserves the two spaces where her image was placed. From here, we can see the moon reach its most extreme points on the horizon every 18.6 years. And at moonset, enter Ishel's temple. Ishel is old and young at the same time. She is wise and magical, patroness of weavers and goddess of fertility. She has lived in eternity, but always appears as if for the first time. She is both woman and moon. She is a rabbit jumping into space, 
with changing faces, and her name, Ishal, means the one of the rainbow. This watery sun reminds us of everything that exists beyond the horizon. Our priests, Mayan astronomers, observed the sun with incredible accuracy. They were able to register the succession of 69 solar and lunar eclipses over 33 years. As Chibulkin or Chibulu, that is, a bite from the sun or the moon. In all our buildings, we revere time as something sacred. Today, the universe begins where we cast our gaze. We are wings that transform the flight of the sky. and end can be found in the stars, especially in Kin, the sun god, who moves eternally in the darkness of the cosmos. And from a corner of the night, We are like Balaam. Jaguars carrying the stars on our skin. Chingo de ki no obe kili chobe. Bekla e u hon kabil ka ane ti kusi hilt pa kate. Shi ko ontum ben kun si kushi kenal ka. Kichum balieter kishule. Tiyanot 